Really? I think we're live. Yeah, we're live. Hi, guys. Uh, it's Nick with our regular Thursday hangout with Zahir. Do you want to say hi, buddy? Hi, everybody. Um, good to see you again. Hope to, hope to have a decent chat today, like all our other quality chats. Oh, God, this thing's bothering me. I saw your hangout with uh, Margaret. I watched it last night. I didn't catch it live. She's something I watched... else, isn't she? That, that was quite amusing. Yeah. Um, oh, Margaret, is cool. <laughs> Margaret is definitely uh, quite the interviewer. Um, I, I really recommend going onto Margaret's channel and having an interview with her because it's just funny. Yeah. I think when I was, because I went on and did the, the same sort of interview thing a few months back, I don't remember getting the advance warning of any questions. You were quite lucky. Hammering them out, yeah, she, she just does it. Um, hold on one second, let's have a look at this. Um, yeah, it says we're live, but I can't actually see the, um, see it on, you know, you know, normally I can actually see your um, channel and it says that you're live on there. And I can look at the chat and yeah. it's not coming Let me up. see if other people can see it. I, I should say as well, we do have um, a guest. We're just trying to sort out the invites and stuff. So hopefully we'll have a guest mm -hmm. arriving shortly. Let's have a look. Okay, if I just go into your channel, maybe it'll be there. Oh. Um, yeah, he's saying the, the invite is not valid or the address is not valid. Oh, right. Okay. All right, um, and I can't actually, you know, when I log into your channel, when I go into your channel, I can't actually yeah. see. It, it, it doesn't so this... actually say it's live or anything and that anyone can watch it. So this is live, I'm guessing. Um, yeah. But can anyone actually see it? I'm just asking if people can see it. But how are you going to find that out? Well, if they can, if they can go into my channel and see, I don't know why you can't go into. I it can't see it. Yeah, see yeah, it's not there. It's just got your. If you go to home, oh, now you're live. There you go. Twenty-two watching. Oh, there you oh. Go. <laughs> yeah. My bad. God, wow. This is this is this is riv this is riveting. Um, riveting. After after how many have we done now? We've done about ten or fifteen of maybe, these. Maybe we should learn to do it properly at one point. I'm not sure when. But that's six minutes of pure gold there, guys. I mean, anyone that was tuned in there, I'm, I'm sure it's been... That's, uh, that's what people tune in for, I swear. They, they tune in to watch us incompetent middle-aged wallies. Yeah, just, just, <laughs> just making a complete mess of it. Or, I mean, yeah, you, see some, you see other people when they do their hangouts and everything, and, and they're like pro at it. They're like really good at it. Um, and then there's us. <laughs> I think that's how it works, isn't it, Nick? It's just... Well, you have to have a USP. Yeah, exactly. That's our unique selling point. It is, yeah. We're crap at You might not be able to see Come and join. anything, you know, but still. <laughs> right, I'm going to have to try and get... Um, our guest should be Sean, by the way. I'll just put it out there. Sean uh, is coming on to join us, but we're having issues. Um, so I, I'm going to need his email to send the, address, the link. To, not the link, the invitation. Let me message him. Oh God! In the meantime, I suppose I can um, just just say um, a few things. I suppose about how things are going at the moment, or yeah, he's just said, could you resend the link? Could you co copy and paste that link to him one more time? See if that... copy and paste the link. Yeah, sure. Um, Do that. I think I can. Yeah, hold on, hold on, one moment. Let me see how I did it. I've got to remember now. Interesting. <laughs> this is terrible. Um, okay. As the chat. Um, there we go. Copy link. And I'll just put it in again. There we go. Right. Okay. Hopefully, we've sent it again. Hopefully that was Yeah. So yeah, we um, are rapidly coming to the end of the 
time we have with the shop. We're closing the doors on Saturday, so that's going to be quite interesting. We've then got an awful lot of work to do, moving everything and setting up at home. Can't wait, to be honest. That sounds like quite a job. I mean, that's um, you know quite a massive change to get yourself set up and sorted out again in, in back in kind of eBay and Amazon land together. I yeah, mean, well, yes. I mean, we, we've been here before, so it's nothing new, really. It's just the sheer volume of stock I've amassed down there. <laughs> fair enough. Fair. Oh, look. I think we have success. <laughs> wow. We managed to do it. <laughs> Hello, Sean. How are you, mate? All right, Nick. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you, Z? Sorry about, sorry about the technical issues. That's all right. It, it just we isn't part of the show, is it? You know what? We do, it, we, I think I have to actually point out we don't do it on purpose in case people think this is like WWE. Where it's all staged, um, we genuinely are this bad at setting up hangouts. There's no, there's no. If we tried to do technical fails, it would be perfect. <laughs> Next week we'll try and make a cut up, and it'll be spot on. Yeah, so just want to put that out there. Hi, Sean. Good to see you. Good to see you. Awesome. Nice. There were chats, and you know, it's pretty awesome. Um, so, how you been doing at the moment? How are you finding? Reselling as your, your week, for example, I suppose. Would be, as what, sorry? You, how's you how's your week to... been so far? How's the week been for so far? Been a, a little bit slower on eBay, to be fair, but I think that's obviously, you know, kids are back to school, and, you know, as parents, like I said before, you know, you, you've perhaps got to focus on your kids rather than yourself for once. So, um, so, so eBay or, you know, the purchases that some people make are having to take a back seat for just the week, but. Normal service will be resumed next week, I assume, so it's fine. I was going to ask you, Sean. Oh, oh, I've got an echo, the dreaded echo. Right, is it gone? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, it's going to be one of those evenings. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you, Sean, because um, your uh, good wife, Nat, is now on board with the business, so how's that working out? And I was going to ask, do you divide up the work by the task or by the item? Because I know as a here and vet kind of divide it up by tasks, but yeah. whereas Andrew and I divide it up by the sort of stuff we're listing. I think to be fair to Zahir and Bex, Zahir just tells her to list everything and he just, he just cracks the whip, doesn't he? Uh, no, 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 no. That's, that's that's disingenuous, Sean. It's not like that. I mean, oh, is it not? <laughs> you tell tell us about yourself and Nat, and then yeah. and then I can clarify. I after. think um, me and Nat, we sort of at the moment we're not really into a, a proper partnership routine. We both do separate things, and we stick to the things we like listing. So Nat at the moment is doing some clothes and shoes and. Uh, I'm sticking to the you know the usual board games and and other sort of tap. Um, so we're not re we haven't really formed a, a proper machine like partnership yet, if that makes sense. Well, that's kind of how Andrea and I do it. We we separate ourselves to a certain extent, so we have that element of separation. So we're in control of our own part of the business because having done this for far too many years we know that that little bit of separation is needed so we're not treading on each other's toes all the time yeah so uh, that's how we do it it works well so andrew does all the like you just said clothing and shoes and some retro 80s toys that she's really into and yeah. i can't do everything else <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think it's good at, at, when you're in a partnership to sort of stick to the things that you really enjoy listing and then i think we're going to aim to sort of have a little listing challenges amongst ourselves as well because we need to get our numbers up you know considerably over the next sort of couple of months certainly leading into obviously the november december time so so that's yeah. that's what we're sort of how we're rolling with it that's actually yeah. quite interesting guys because i think that i i can see eventually uh, rebecca and i ending up in the same way i think the difference is whereas both you and your other halves have been doing this kind of thing for a lot longer Whereas obviously Rebecca's like brand new to to doing this um, in any capacity, really part or full time. So I think that um, is everything okay. Yeah. Seems to be a freeze a freeze issue there on Nick's camera. I'm not sure, but 
Okay. Um, well, we'll carry on anyway. Yeah. Um, like, uh, he's caught up now. His Pentium 2's managed to catch up. and I think he was hanging on your every, every word. <laughs> yeah. But, so, I mean, I think it's a bit, a little bit different for me and Beck because, like, like I said, Beck's new at this in, in whatever capacity. So, at the moment, it is very much task-based. Like, she's much more comfortable sitting and listing. Um, and we found another thing she's really good at, which is building Lego, which is fantastic. She she really enjoy she enjoys it. She actually said, yeah. "I wasn't expecting it. I enjoy it." And I, it just made me happy. Um, that made me happy. Um, but at the moment, it's very much task based. But already, um, I think Beck's already kind of influencing what we might pick up in the future because she, you know, the focus on clothes, etc., is is definitely something that she likes. Um, she likes photographing them like. I was I was um, trying to photograph these lovely silk pajamas that I picked up, and had I photographed them the way I was going to, they would have looked awful. They were creased. They were, you know, they were just horrific looking. They didn't look as good. Um, but you know, she's she's okay with like getting them steamed um, and and then you know displaying them in a more presentable fashion. You know, kind of like shop dressing, window dressing. Um, yeah, that's absolutely. not my strong point. I can do it if it's an action man or a, or, or you know give me give me like a set of a set of teenage turtles or something. I'll make a nice display. But yeah. you know when it comes to other things, I'm not so good. And I think eventually we'll end up um, to to kind of or evolve to the point where you guys are at. So, but yeah. at the moment it's very much task based. Yeah. Yeah. I think it just makes sense to to play to your strengths, and it's not a sexist thing at all. It's just that. Sometimes women have a better eye for things, how to make things look beautiful, how to make things look attractive, whereas I'm just, I, I do like arranging my stuff, but it's very kind of matter of fact. And, and when it comes to clothing, I, I just, yeah, and it doesn't interest me as much either. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what Andrew loves and that's what she, she does best. So that works for us. I must say, before I forget about this, I picked up a Lego Harry, pa Harry Potter game uh, the other week in a charity shop, paid up for it, paid £12 for it. Um, but it's, I'm going to send it to FBA for about 35, 40. Did the whole check it, and I was missing four or five bits. A couple that I managed to find, and I was missing two bits. So I the chat hangout thing on um, Facebook, and Sean kindly said, "I'll have a look if I've got those bits," and he did. So this morning, this turned up with two tiny bits. The thing is with Lego, it's it makes all the difference to get a set so you can say 100% complete, and then you can charge the premium. If you say it's incomplete, you put off half the buyers straight away and all I was missing was I don't know if you're going to be able to see this these two tiny pieces which Sean kindly sent but there was a bonus wasn't there Sean <laughs> yeah there was <laughs> <laughs> now is this meant to be me it is yeah because <laughs> in the packet was this guy so he's got <laughs> what looks like a converse hoodie on which I have he's got the kind of dark <laughs> quiffy hair <laughs> And blue jeans. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find a scruffy-looking face with glasses on. So it was either glasses or a scruffy face. So I went for the scruffy face. <laughs> yeah, he does have um, the little beard. Is he showing? I can't see. I don't know if he can. Ping. There you go. Oh, he does. He's got a little bit of stubble there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thanks ever so much, Sean. I will be paid a favour once you uh, once you need some bits or some board game parts at some point. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, that's a point. Um, like so here's had some uh, some really epic Lego pickup this this week, and obviously Bex enjoys uh, you know sorting it. So so here says, and uh, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I, I really I actually I enjoy Lego as well. Actually, it is that uh, I never really had Lego as a kid, um, but certainly since reselling, I've, it's come to the fore a lot more, and and I actually do enjoy finding it and listing it. And and down to the parts as well. I find that quite, I I quite enjoy doing that. Yeah, I mean, was, I I enjoy listing it and and selling it, and f I even enjoy photographing it actually. Um, but building it, um, yeah, I, I even enjoy the sets when they're complete. They look really nice, but building it, no, not not for me. But... I'll I'll keep working on you, Zahir. One day you'll it'll click one day and you'll go, Lego is awesome. It's awesome, yeah, it's the best. <laughs> he can't be that far away from it really. He's had some good pickups, hasn't he, in the last few months. I, I almost think it's like some form of sick punishment from the universe. 
Like, you know, all I found was, all I'm finding is Lego. I'm not getting any of the stuff that I usually like finding. <laughs> but I'm not complaining yeah. because... Yeah. You know, if that pickup you had was punishment, what sort of punishment's that? You're gonna make like three or four hundred quid out of a ten quid pickup. Yeah. Well, you know, that depends really. I'm not gonna sell it all on. I think I'm not gonna sell it on Amazon, so I'm not gonna make that much. But you won't be far off it. I mean, uh, I was looking at Harry Potter um, the last few last couple of weeks, and the market for Lego Harry Potter is still ferocious. It's crazy still. It yeah, is. I mean. Set. It's okay. going up, yeah. I mean, I reckon I could, if I held out, I could get probably 150, 160 for that one. Maybe even more at Christmas. So, I, you know, maybe it's worth holding out at Christmas for that. But I've been looking at used. We were only seven pieces short, which is cool. So, um, I've got the, the one, unfortunately, the annoying thing is one of them was a Death Eater's face. So, the specific Death Eater's face. But I managed to get that off of Bricklink. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully the other six pieces, Mr. Chapman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did Ken manage to sort you out with those, do you think? Has he got I, all of the I, other he's bits? Got, he's got all of them. Yeah, yeah, he said he's going to post them out for me, so that would be fantastic. That would be awesome. it's, it's so handy to have friends that are into Lego. <laughs> oh, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> so what was your, I was going to ask you, Z, what was your rationale but about not, sending these sets to Amazon when potentially you could get more? It, it's not rational. In the, I'm, I'm not looking at it just from profit. I'm kind of looking at it in terms of our headspace at the moment. Um, we, I feel like I just want to focus on getting eBay right and, and, and maximize like how good I can be at eBay. I, I have actually sent up a bunch of stuff that will sell at Christmas to uh, at Amazon a fair amount. Um, and I think what it is is more that the kind of one-offs that will achieve more money at Amazon, definitely. Um, the one-offs that kind of use stuff, like the certain board games, I was going to send up. But I'm just thinking I'm just going to just slap everything onto my eBay store. And even if I have to take a bit less, then I have to take a bit less. But I think it's more of a, 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 a mental thing. Me and Beck just want to focus on just getting our eBay um, full to the brim, as it were, and and then we can think about FBA regularly throughout the year from next year. But I kind of just feel like it's a bit too much at the minute. So, I mean, like I said, we did send up a ton of stuff, but it was really simple. It was it, that was like the stuff I want to send up to FBA. I want it to be brainless uh, in the sense that brand new in the box, you know, like wholesale packaged, you know by the crate as it were that kind of item that you can find like RA that's current as well do you know what I mean like current toys it, like if I if I came across a stock of current toys I would send them up um so for example I picked up some refs um boxed wrestling figures recently but they're not current they're like a few generations back some are like 2010 2011 2012 2013 and some of those, they don't have like super fast ranks. So yes, I'd make a lot more money when they eventually sell on Amazon, but it wouldn't be super quick. And I think at the moment, I'd, I'd only be comfortable um, sending up stuff that I know is going to shift like mega fast because it's current. Yeah. A few people are yeah. talking about Amazon. A few people have said to me that they, they only send brand new sealed stuff up as well because there's no hassle. There's no question, is there? There's no comeback generally on brand new sealed stuff so there's there's less gray area there as well whereas with ebay i suppose you're comfortable describing the stuff that's used and taking all your pictures and that sort of stuff sean you still, you still do um fba out of interest um no not not really um i did it obviously i, I went into it last sort of november and december and i just couldn't source the the stuff the, the quantities i wanted to to keep it growing so i sort of retracted back to ebay but it's interesting i know that people don't say i oh, only send new new stuff up there but i sent some pretty ropey looking stuff up to amazon at christmas because i could fetch better prices and i think as long as you take the photos and describe it i think people are, are pretty happy i think i know there is a, a, a sort of a gulf between amazon customers and and eBay customers, but I think if if they're buying a used item or or a new, you know new old stock or like new, as long as you've got the photographs of the sort of the, the sort of defects as it were, I think you're fine on Amazon. 
and yeah, I've, been... I, I've always sent a fair bit of used stuff up there. And I think as long as you know the policies and you, and you adhere to those as, as closely as you can, because Amazon are really hot on that, then there's no problem. But yeah. I do know a few people who only send new because it's quick and easy, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I'm not averse to sending used. I think, in a way, used can offer you better, you know, better kind of returns a, a lot of the times. Um, but I think, again, I'd like to. It's more of a case of focus. Like, I want to get, you know, I, I want eBay to be, you know, really like buzzing along nicely. And it's interesting what you guys mentioned about um, like condition and the difference between customers. But here's another great thing about YouTube, I suppose, is I, I had a comment on my video where I had a guy, um, I think his username Byron, I think he mentioned how he sends in a lot of used Lego to FBA and he's had no issue. But the difference, and this is a key difference, when I send sell Lego on, on eBay, I'll say, I'll even say in my listing, this will be partially broken down. So basically when you get it, you're going to have to probably break off all the little annoying bits that you need a tool to remove or whatever, you're going to have to still break it down fully to rebuild it. Yeah. The way this guy has avoided any issues, I'm guessing, is he takes the time once he's built the set to check it's complete, taken photos, uh, sent photos up with his FBA listing, he then will actually um, piece it out according to the booklet and in little separate bags. So even though it's a used item, when the FBA customer receives it, just generally, it's going to look a lot nicer. Whereas mine's going to be all in one bag, half built, half not built. <laughs> and that, that's going to, that guy, that's going to great lengths. I've sent used Lego up, just in the box. I've checked it obviously, but I've never had any issue. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> that sounds like going the whole extra oh. mile that that maybe isn't necessary. So yeah, I, I don't bother with that. To be fair. I suppose maybe in in context to like a really high value set where you'd want to just avoid all issues, maybe then I don't know. Maybe, it feels maybe. like a I mean, set you might. Yeah, what it comes down to is everybody needs to do what makes them feel comfortable and gives them the, the the impetus to do it. You know what I mean? A lot of things we do. It's interesting actually. I made that video yesterday about sending up uh, bog standard media stock to Music Magpie, and I said in that video that you have to send up cases that aren't smashed. I don't know where I got that information from. I think it's just my, because I'm a bit anal about all that stuff. You know, it has to be right. And, and two or three people have messaged me already saying, I send them in smashed up boxes and they don't care. But it's just, it's just something I've always done. So I put it out there as if it was gospel. But <laughs> no, you can send smashed boxes up to uh, Music Magpie, apparently. I, I, always, I always thought they, they were fussy with them. I thought they, would, they wouldn't buy them if they were broken. Yeah. Apparently it doesn't matter. They, they are fussy about the condition of the disc and the artwork. Yeah. But apparently Joe, um, Joe Chris Pine said that he sent smashed up cases up. Another guy said to me, I sent 60 odd CDs up the other day and I changed all the boxes. So I was sending smashed ones so I could keep the good ones. <laughs> I'm like, what? We always go to great lengths to change them all and put decent boxes on. So yeah, you learn something new every day. Definitely do. So how's it going in the chat here? I, I'm not going to attempt to open it this I, time. Yeah, I've, there's 38 people watching at the moment, I think. Um, let me just check that. Yeah, I think that's right. Let me just refresh it. Um, yeah, 48. 40 actually now. Yeah, 40. And yeah, we've had a few comments come through in the chat. So um, let's just have a look. Uh, sorted. Let's have a look. Any questions? A lot, well, a lot of people talking amongst themselves. Uh, RetroCable.com has a question. He asks, guys, what's your best ever single flip? Um, it consists. Uh, he mentions that there was a James Bond prop watch from Thunderball that cost £25 from a boot sale that sold for over 100 k at an auction. So, yeah, I mean, that's... I don't think any of us have had that kind of a flip. No, <laughs> no much more humble, I think. Um, you go first, Sean. I can't. I can't recall any sort of specific item, but I think one of our best flips was we picked up a. I've said it before. We picked up a small tin and had a load of um, like rubber tin tin figures in it, and it was just just before that uh, Spielberg film was released a few years ago, right. and they were in really good condition. Had the rocket and snowy and all that in it, and we sold them individually, and and they were going like 60 or 70 pounds per figure 
and we turned over about three or four hundred pounds on these plastic things that you could have bought probably for a tenner. It was just cr it was just really mad. It was a random pickup, but it obviously it was the timing with the film coming out, and it was just I think that that sort of sticks in my mind as one of the best the best sort of returns on a on a purchase. I, I don't I don't I can't recall like any particular item itself selling for several hundred pounds. I've never really had that. I know obviously Z you've you've had it, haven't you? Your your electrical wizardry items and things. <laughs> Yeah, the wizardry is always a good niche. Get into wizardry, guys. I, I recommend it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I think my best ever one value-wise was a coffee grinder that I bought for forty, and I think I sold it for two eighty. So profit-wise, that was probably one of the nicest single things I found at a boot fair. But I've not had anything like you know ridiculous right. like 20, yeah. 25 to 100k i mean that's going some isn't it i mean yeah. you'd be telling that story at the pub in a few years wouldn't you i mean whereas i might i may have forgotten the coffee grinder by then yeah <laughs> i think um again not an individual item but the the or the one deal that made me the most money would have been um back, going back to when we had the high street um exchange shop a bit like cx that we used to run uh, a guy sold me his entire lifetime collection of death metal on CD, and it was about four or five thousand discs. Um, and I paid fifty pence an item on the whole lot. It were twenty, thirty, forty quid CDs, and I couldn't even tell you the numbers. But let's—it was about four or five thousand, and I guess the average would have been about five pounds all told that I got back on each item. Um, so that was. Yeah, as a single purchase, that made me the most money That's out of anything. Pretty amazing. Ever <laughs> but it did take me about three years to clear it all. Yeah. So <laughs> long, long tail there. The true meaning of long tail. Um, I also, had a little question here from Stephen Moore who asks, "What is this label thing that they do in America? I see Gil Daddy only does this now. Um, I think you're referring to private labeling on Amazon. Um, it's not something that's just in America, but um, I don't know a great deal about it, to be honest, having never really delved, delved into it. I only know what I've learned from videos. But, I mean, Nick, you might have a better understanding of it, actually. Do you, do you know anything about private well, labeling yeah. or Sean? It's not something I'm involved with, as you know, but um, from my understanding, it's basically either having a, a product manufactured for you in, in China or importing stuff and then repackaging it with your own labeling. Uh, or adding a sticker to it or renaming it or something mm -hmm. and then you can sell it and nobody else can effectively because it's something you've made so it's it's about creating your own product and then marketing it yourself on Amazon or on eBay I guess but mainly this is aimed at Amazon yeah um, yeah but yeah it's about do you have any coming up with that Sean, or? Um, I've, I've seen it it's sort of I don't know, a couple of years ago, when I was first getting into sort of the YouTube side of it, we had the big sort of FBA spin from America, wasn't there? You know, there was 1,001 people tell it, selling you their FBA course. And there's been a, a little bit of private label. Obviously, I've no no experience personally on it, but it's 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 exactly as Nick says. It's about having an item with with your branding on it, basically. So you have a unique item for sale. But, but I, I know of a couple of people that have have done this but then they've had problems with the manufacturers obviously suddenly realize that they're selling a selling a hot item and then they've jumped in and under on Amazon themselves so it's quite a I'd imagine it's quite a minefield I, and you you have to have a lot of money I think to, to get it off the ground I, th I think I've also heard that Amazon themselves obviously because they've got every bit of information about what you sell Amazon themselves can track successful listings and often they themselves will go in and, and say if, they're, they're, if you find something that they haven't, it's not for long. Um, I mean, and, and I've noticed actually, have you seen these, these, these adverts on YouTube with the lady that goes, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think she, I think, on every video I put out, she's on. Stop. Yeah, uh, I think I think she's she's gonna help you um, find that product and do that all for you. So yeah. I don't, I, <laughs> you can buy her ebook. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's brilliant. Funny because 
when I'm just browsing on YouTube now, it doesn't matter what video I click on, whether it's reselling related or not, she's there. She knows I'm a reseller <laughs> or what more likely Google knows I'm a reseller. So she pops up on any random video, you know, like a ultimate fails video. And there she is telling me to do private label again. It's like, oh, sod off, will you? Yeah. yeah. I, I think spending... right. It's a whole different thing to what we do, isn't it? It's, you know, I'm sure it obviously is successful because that's why people do it. But, but as a general sort of tap monkeys we are, I, I, I don't see the the, the appeal to it and I think you have to have a, quite a bit of investment and I think there's a lot of a lot of pitfalls along the way whereas you know we just rock up to a boot fair go exploring around it don't we and then we find stuff and sell it don't we yeah it's a whole different mindset the wholesale you know focusing on one or two products but it would be very investment heavy. You'd have to have a lot of money up front. Whereas to a certain degree, what we do, it's it's smaller investment and higher profits. So it's it's a totally different model. And it's one that suits me. I, I've had wholesale accounts in the past when I've had high, high street shops and I've gone down that route. But the amount of money involved is can be quite frightening sometimes. And it's not always, it doesn't always work out well either. So yeah, yeah it's a bit more of a gamble, I would say, on that side of it. Um, just to mention, um, we've gone up to 51 live viewers now, so thanks everyone for popping in and saying hi, especially to our esteemed guest. Um, um, we've got um, Richard Payne in the chat who says his best two, uh, his best flip was two, re um, my best flip, two relays from a boot sale, uh, 15 pounds for the two, and he sold them for 250 pound each. Took nearly a year to shift them, but he held out for top end money. So. That's an incredible um, profit of fifteen pounds to five hundred. Um, so, yeah, brilliant. And Stephen Moore says, uh, "Thanks to user here, we sold our first Walkman player the other day for fifty-five quid, um, which is uh, fantastic." And Julie Hall says, "That was the ad at the beginning of this stream." <laughs> Actually, yeah, she followed me around. <laughs> She, she, yeah, she's. She, <laughs> um, Bernard Armstrong what, says, what, what, oh, "No, sorry. What? what Guy, what did that guy sell? Relay, did you say? Oh, What's a relay? Relays, yeah, some relay, uh, two relays. He says it's probably something. Relay, oh, getting on the relay niche there. Um, yeah. Julie, um, Bernard Armstrong says Steve Rakin wants to get more guests to his show. Would you guys consider being a guest on his show? Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd be happy to be a guest on Steve Rakin's show, of course. Who wouldn't? Yeah, we may have to get him in here. He's a fantastic guy, raking profit. I was, yeah. thinking, about, I was thinking about asking um, Bonafide Hustler to come in. I know he drops in and views some weeks. So. Yeah, he's fantastic. Um, and again, we've got we've got similar sentiments in the chat. Stephen Moore says, "I like buying my tat." And I think that's <laughs> Sean. I mean, you can elaborate on that. I mean, that's it's true, isn't it? It's a love. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I think it. And we've seen obviously within YouTube and and the reselling group, you see people come in. And obviously they see, you know, I, they see the videos. Oh, I bought this for a pound and sold it for two hundred pounds. So they think, oh, this is easy. I'll go and find five of them. And, and it's not so easy. And you've got to get up at six o'clock in the morning and go exploring around the boot fairs like Dora the Explorer and, and things like that. And yeah, um, you do, yeah. You know, it, it's, you're not guaranteed to find this stuff, are you? So you have to have a passion for it, and and that shines through on videos and and the longevity of people that resell, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, don't know what to say, really. Um, I think that's you, you've covered everything there. Um, definitely. Um, Karen, I was going to ask. Can I just ask? I was going to say to Sean, how are you enjoying your chats? It's it's a, a very different dynamic with you and Caroline than it was to uh, when you and Tez were doing it. What do you how mean? You in, in what context? <laughs> <laughs> well, you you mean we've gone from shambolic chaos? To organised, <laughs> gone from innuendo uh, laden, laden giggle fest <laughs> to slightly less uh, innuendo laden giggle fest. <laughs> no, it is, it's brilliant fun. It is a, is a diff totally different dynamic, but we all know and love Kaz, don't we? And um, she's great fun, isn't she? And she, you know, I have to keep her organised, obviously, because it's oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know how it is. But you know, but once once she's once I've got her all organised and everything's on point, it. It, it's, it runs really smoothly and it's it's great fun. Oh, we, we can all see that, yeah, you're holding that, that whole thing together really well. Um, you know, we can see that she's lucky to have your um, 
organisation yeah. skills, you never know. Certain, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Shine through. Oh, yeah, Caroline there chimes in. In your dreams, Sean, in your dreams. Well, the, you the proof is in the videos, Caroline, that's all I can say. We couldn't even have that falsehood out there for, for more than a couple of seconds, and she was there to quash it. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we know. Sorry, Sean, come on. Come on. I know, I know. I can't, I can't, I couldn't even keep a straight face saying that, could I? <laughs> no, she, she's fabulous, Caroline, and uh, she's she's top, you know, and she, she organises me, and I just turn up and do do what I'm supposed to do and hopefully it, it pans out all right. Oh, it's fantastic. I, I love, I look forward to it. I wish you did it every week to be honest. I mean alternate weeks is not quite enough. I think it's just, a, it's really good like the way you structure it and or the way Caroline structures it I should say. Uh, <laughs> oh, to, yeah. to be fair, I, I did have a, a have a slight say in some of that, so, oh, but she okay. puts it all together. Okay. Yeah, so, so it has, it, that part was a bit of a partnership. Oh, maybe oh, there's more to it. maybe seventy thirty at a push, but but the actual the, the beginning of the shows, the timing is all down to Caroline. I have to say that we're lucky if I send a text to Zahir a day or two before and says, "Should we talk about something specific? <laughs> what do you want to do?" That's about as far as our organising goes. Talking of which, um, we didn't really come up with a topic today, did we? So we'll just have to uh, see if the, the the lovely viewers have got anything they want to quiz us about yeah if any of you guys have got questions please type question with them um, in capitals and then ask your question because we haven't really got a specific topic um, to talk about um, people are sharing some of their best flips Andrew Wilkinson flipped a 50p Harry Potter book for 475 pound um, Gaddy actually did ask he about drop shipping he wanted to know what your opinion on drop shipping was um, Sean, I actually think I heard you say you may have done this. Yeah, that's right. I did. I did do it not uh, in a traditional perhaps drop shipping, but I've done it using Amazon as my supplier and drop shipping back to eBay, and it it works. But um, I can't. I couldn't juggle like traditional eBay and Amazon flipping. It's very stressful. So, but it but it works. But you have to have. You've got to be Johnny on the button because obviously you know if you get a hot selling item, the, it sells out pretty quickly on Amazon. So then you can have a bit of issues sourcing it from Tesco Direct or, or you know Debenhams or wherever you can source it through. So there's a lot of stress with it, but it but it works. As for wholesale dropship warehouses, I've no 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 experience of that, and I'd be very doubtful that you could dropship items from other companies. You know, yeah, I mean, Poundland's a good a good place to start from if you're thinking about doing a bit of flipping. I know it's not quite the same thing, but it's you're sourcing items. Perhaps you know you could have one listed, and then a quantity of ten, and then pop down and buy them or whatever, couldn't you? So it's not quite the same. But I would, if you're ever thinking about doing something like that, perhaps dabble with a bit of eBay to uh, Amazon to eBay flipping, or vice versa. I've um, heard other people talk about that, Sean, and my. The thought that always comes in my head is that so somebody goes onto eBay and they buy your item, which obviously isn't yours, it's in the Amazon warehouse, and then you yeah. go onto Amazon and type in their address, am I getting this right? And you send yeah. it to them. Yeah. You obviously cheaper. But then don't don't the customer come back to you and say, Why have you why has this come from Amazon? Because it'll turn up in an Amazon box it's, with it, an Amazon it's, invoice. <laughs> It's, it is really interesting. You, like I was doing it, I was following a, a DS Domination. This company was called, and they were were really good, American based, but obviously, you know, the the processes are the same. So you basically mark it as a gift, so they don't get the invoice. But I never had anyone question why their eBay purchase come up in Amazon packaging, which is is quite interesting. Right. I, and I think it's because you're, and also the prices you're charging. Probably higher premiums than than a lot of people are selling it themselves on eBay. Because obviously you've got to factor in your profit margins, obviously which are significantly lower than buying your items yourself. But it, it's interesting that I never once, and I was doing it for over a year, not one customer ever complained or left me neutral feedback or negative feedback about it coming from Amazon in Amazon packaging. And, and that's I, interesting because that's. I, I think, I, that thought in my head was what put me off trying it, to be honest. Yeah. And also, I, 
I, if I received, if I bought something on eBay and it turned up in an Amazon package, my first first thought would be to go and check the price on Amazon, and then that would really piss me off if it's cheaper. <laughs> on there. Yeah, but I, I think what it is, it's the type of person you're selling to. Now, with particularly using Amazon as your platform, like you know, drop shipping, people obviously aren't searching for price because most drop shippers on you could you can go into Lego and search a Lego set. And you better probably pinpoint the people that are doing drop shipping because there's probably about a ten or twenty or thirty pound price increase from from the actual real price. So you're just you're after just casual people just typing, oh, I want to buy that Harry Potter set, and they're not bothered about what how much it costs them. You just got to try and get that best match search. And, yeah. and I think as a as a business model, I really like it because you don't have any investment until the product is sold. So you can, right. work on, you can work on small margins because you don't care because it's just a, a few clicks and a, a copy and paste and address. So even yeah. if you only make three or four pounds, which is probably, you know, might, some people might say it's hardly worth your while, but if you don't even have to invest in the stock and you don't have to package it or deliver it, yeah, you, you may as well make a small margin. You know what I mean? It's better than nothing. Yeah, that's what I was doing. When, when um, Amazon were doing the – it used to be £10 with the free shipping, didn't it? Um, and then they bumped it up to 20. So I was aiming a lot of products that were sort of 10 pound on Amazon and then flipping them for sort of 20 or so. And then after obviously your fees and things, you, you were making sort of, you know, between two and five pounds profit. And obviously if you're buying higher ticket items, your your profits increase. I mean, last year I was selling a, the, the Batcave, the Connext Batcave. It was um, on Amazon, I think, for 25 and I was selling them on eBay for 50 and I was using you know obviously it was a, a number one seller toy or whatever but obviously I had to keep an eye on the quantities because they were going down quickly so you've got to be you know I was making probably about 15 to 20 pounds pure profit for just doing a few clicks so so you're right it's, it's good on that case but you've got to really really be on top of your processes on on ordering and keeping an eye on the stock levels on Amazon as well yeah, and, choo and choosing the right product as well, surely, because what you said there is kind of um, that goes against what a lot of people would think. A lot of people automatically assume that shoppers or buyers go on to eBay to get cheaper prices um, and go to Amazon and are happy to be FBA customers um, because they don't care about price and the, and. FBA customers are generally meant to pay higher prices, but what you've just illustrated there is there are exceptions to that general rule. Yeah, I, th I think what people need to sort of perhaps get into uh, focus a bit with eBay customers. Now, an example is me, me and my dad. My dad always buys his stuff on Amazon. He, he doesn't use eBay at all, whereas I'm Generally, I've obviously I've changed a bit over the last couple of years, but generally I was always eBay. eBay is, is where I sort because you just think that that's cheaper. So and and you can see even on on eBay, can't you? We we can all list the same item and it will be different prices and the, it will sell for different prices. So eBay customers aren't all tightwads, are they? They're not they're not all hunting out the lowest price. So you need to get yourselves away from that sort of thought process about what you think an eBay customer is. Because we're all tightwads, and we're all going to use auctions and snipe snipe our goodies off, aren't we? But when you're selling your goods on Buy It Now, your customers are just typing it into Google or into eBay. As long as you can get up that best match search, you're you're laughing, you know. So so don't think that it's got eBay customers are just there for buying the cheapest. <coughs> it's not. I think also one thing is that um, people, let's say somebody has a really bad experience on Amazon. And I've heard this in the past and they say, I'm never shopping there again. And people do that and their allegiance flips to like eBay or another site. And likewise, other people think eBay, oh, they wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. You know what I mean? Because it's, yeah. it's whatever it is. They have a certain opinion or they've had bad customer service from eBay and will never go back to it. And then they flip to Amazon. And I think people are very brand loyal sometimes. Yeah. So they, they're not platforms that's perhaps we would and and try and find the, the cheapest price they're just very brand loyal so you can take advantage of that for sure yeah and, and i think people are using just google as well a lot more now aren't they because you get um when you've had a sale you get those accounts with they're all sort of numbers aren't they rather than a than a username and that's i think that's a direct from a google search so 
and obviously people are using their phones a lot more. So you know, uh, item descriptions, things people aren't trawling through all that anymore as much, are they? And, that, and that's going to change. So you, you know, as long as you've got your photos and your keywords up, I think that's going to stand you in good stead, and you can charge the price that you want to receive, can't you? Definitely. Um, moving on, uh, Bernard Armstrong asks, um, you may know this actually, Sean, because you're into your toys and figures as well, uh, um, are Lord of the Rings figures good sellers, as he has 25 of the bloody things? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, again, I mean, you've, have you sold some to here, haven't you, as well, Lord of the Rings ones? I did. I'm, I'm not sure what kind Bernard is talking about. I've only got experience in the um, articulated ones that came out al around the same time as the movie, made by like Toy Biz. Yeah. yeah. Those ones, yes, will have good value, especially I think, um, I don't know which one I sold, but it was one went for really good money. I can't remember whether, was it Tree Beard or, yeah. I think I got 20 odd pounds or something for one of those. Um, I'm not sure if it was Tree Beard, it was one of those. And then there's a certain berserker Urukai guy with the white hand thing on him. The, the, I mean, there are some which do well. Uh, no, sorry, it was Sauron I sold for 25 quid. That was it. The the the, the main guy, yeah. Tall. Yeah. His eyes go all red. Yeah. But that, those are the only ones I've got experience with. But I've seen there's a lot of other figures around, aren't there? Like smaller size? Because these yeah. are about 10-inch figures. So yeah. those sell well. I think there's there's yeah. lots of different variants of it. The, the Toy Biz ones, in my opinion, are the best ones. So especially if you can pick them up still in their packaging. You know, that's off oval shaped packaging and they are absolute quality and um, I've, I did pick up a job lot of them at a boot fair uh, two or three years ago and they were good steady sellers but but then some aren't and you, you're, you're looking at the the quality even of the packaging is proper quality and you're thinking why is that only worth five pounds you know it's crazy because when you go to the toy shops now and, and from the Hobbit f release films the, the figures they release in them are the smaller ones and the quality is just not there anymore is it? I've noticed, I've actually seen a lot of those Hobbit um, range figures just languishing at, at boot fairs and no one wants to know them, even for like a quid or two. Yeah. Um, like, like you said, they don't go for much more than a fiver, whereas you're right, like some of the older ones, like, like I mean, boxed, I can't imagine. I mean, what would you get for like a Sauron boxed? Well, I, I, I don't know. You'd have to sort of obviously do a search. I mean, my son, my oldest son used to, used to collect them and he had... All right. God knows how many he used to have. We buy them for him, but um, but I, I picked up a lot, and they were, you know, really good sellers. Some of them, and uh, I think the 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 best ones are the ones that are like the gift pack ones, where they're sort of, I think the one there might have been up to ten figures in it or five figures. Some of those sets go for they go for crazy money. But, so it um, really depends. Like like with pretty much every other um, item out there, it's. It's what you've got, um, yeah. so it depends what yeah. type of Lord of the Ring figures there. So um, yeah. I hope that helps a little bit anyway. Um, I picked a bag of those actually a few months back, and like most things, I haven't listed it. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what they are, but they had they were so so detailed, and they all had like clothing that was separate to the figure, you know, and and weapons and all sorts. So I think they might have been Toy Biz ones. I can't remember, but I got a whole bag full for two quid. Yeah, oh, that's good. I I did buy some. Uh, about three weeks ago and uh, it was just the figures on their own they're pretty poor condition really but I, I paid a fiver for the for the bag and it was only because there was a, a rival a, a new kid on the block reseller who I'd, who I'd clocked going around buying up wrestling figures and, it, and he was looking and I, I was going through this bag and I could see him like looking and I thought you ain't having these mate I don't care I don't care what I'm gonna pay I'm having these, and I paid a five, and I, I think I sold them for twenty, but they weren't in very good quality, very good condition. But it was just, I was just sort of making a, a, a point. I don't know if it was any worth making, but it, it I was just making a point to him. <laughs> Sometimes you have to just get in there, don't you, and just get off, get off the mark, or you know, like. Yeah, especially have either of you guys ever had that pressure that you can feel from other dealers around you, and then felt almost you know, overwhelmed by the pressure of it and then bought stuff that you later regretted. I've overpaid on stuff because I can feel a guy staring me in the back of the head and I think, you really want this, it must be great, and ended up yeah. buying stuff that wasn't all that good, you know? Yeah, because yeah, you just know as soon as you put it down, they're going to pick it up, aren't they? So it's like, no, I'm going to have it, and I don't care what I'm going to pay for it, I'm going to have it. 
Yeah, I like to have that that little bit of breathing room where I can think through the purchase and maybe if I get a chance, look it up. You know what I mean? When I'm pressured, every, my brain just goes to mush and I just end up buying crap. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it's definitely, I think we've all been there with that where you, you do, you can almost feel it, you know, you can almost feel the... Um, the, the tension from the person behind you that they're, they're, they're willing you to put it down, aren't they? Like, and we've all done it. I mean, I've I've been stood behind someone saying, "Put it down." <laughs> yeah, and obviously, it, it, invariably, they all bloody take it, don't they? I mean, like maybe one out of ten leaves it, and then you're the other's there, like, you know. Um, but <laughs> you've done the thing where you're where you're you're that guy standing waiting, and they put, and as soon as it touches the table, you're like, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> you, you you almost graze their hand as it's leaving the item, like you get like that little bit of fingertip action, you know, like. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what I've had. You you guys might have had this. When I'm making a, I tend to make a stack of media and maybe a game or whatever. And have you had someone come along and just pick your whole stack up and start looking at it? I I think I've been one of those people. Um, not like a stack, but there have been times where I've thought that like a bag on the floor was um, part of a stall and then you get you often get someone get really defensive about that excuse me that's my bag that is and you're like yeah. sorry you know my bad um, well I've turned around you know I, I have my old granny trolley and um, I've turned around before and there's been a woman like fishing bits out of it and I'm like <laughs> whoa hang on it's not even part of the stall it's not stood next to the stall you know and they're rummaging in my thing and I'm like what are you doing that's my stuff <laughs> yeah, no. yeah I've had a, had a thing actually uh, I think it was last summer there was, a, there was a lady sort of buying a load of stuff and she had a couple of carrier bags and there was another bag right beside her foot and it looked like it was hers and I was really hacked off because it had a, a Buzz Lightyear and a, and a Woody in it and there was a load of um, when, I, when I got it it was a load of Duplo uh, cars in there as well and uh, I'm thinking, oh god, she's landed, she's scored all right, and then she sort of shuffled aside a bit and then left the bag there. So I thought, oh, I don't know about this. So I said, oh, is, is this yours? And she goes, oh no, no, no. So then I quickly grabbed it and said, asked the seller how much it was. It was only, I think it was a five, five pound, and I couldn't sort of get my five out quick enough. But it just, just looked to me like it was hers, and I was like cursing her for a foul <laughs> for me. Oh, but it bless. was like, as I was turns around, guys. I don't know. Here, here, here. I tell you, I have to try and um, stop myself looking in other resellers' bags and trolleys and stuff. It, it can be so depressing, <laughs> especially if you're having not a very fruitful day and you just peer in someone else's bag and you can see all these gems. It's like, yeah. oh, I just, I just force myself to stay focused and not look these yeah, days. Yeah, don't look, do you? But you can tell by the look on their faces, can't you? They're, they're all like, they got that real sort of happy, smug kind of look on their face when they're walking past and, and you're going, don't look, don't look. Headset problems. What's up, Z? <laughs> oh, I can't hear us now. <laughs> Quick, let's talk about it. <laughs> oh dear. So, Sean, where, are you still mainly um, boot sale buying? You, you tried a bit of auction. How did you get on with that? Well, that was that was really interesting because we we did drive quite a way to go to this auction. It was our first ever sort of real auction experience and and I quite enjoyed it but and we would have gone more regularly but it's just it's too far to go for us I think in a, in a day um, obviously you know we've got the kids back at school so it's a very tight margin but I quite enjoyed the experience and it, trying to find a decent sort of general auction sale in Kent and I would I would probably travel to that I, 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 rather ironically I did have a before we went in there was some sort of like stall holders around this little complex, and I scored on a load of um, board games, which I was. I, I said in another chat, I'd have to do a video on this. I've picked up some really cool board games, but I've not got them listed yet. They're, we've put them all down the unit for now. Um, so even before we'd gone into the auction, I knew I was sort of quids in for the day, but the actual auction purchases were, were very interesting. I bought up some um, Technics separate stereo, and uh, it was there wasn't anyone really bidding on it, so it was, it was interesting that the electrical items weren't being bid on. It was all obviously the usual stuff, the gold bars, the gold, you know, the bullion and all that, that was being bid on. But these the random old electronics people weren't interested in it, so 
So that sort of, I would definitely like to find another auction locally that was that would probably have obviously that, that kind of stuff again. So you mentioned a unit there. Do you have a storage unit now? Yeah, we we bit the bullet because our house, the room I'm in now, uh, you know, I used to have my green screen. Well, now that's that's shelving now. So we've got shelving at at home, and all of our listed stuff in theory is at home. And then all the unlisted stuff and some of our household items are in the storage unit, and it's it's made the place and the process, particularly with Nat coming on board, a lot a lot simpler. Because I was just thinking, you know, like we're we're in this battle at the moment because Nat's getting us all organised and things are going in this box and in that box, and I'm just listing it and it's in that corner or it's in that corner. So even now, when I've sold something, I'm thinking, where where is it? I can't find it. Oh yeah, it's in that box where it's marked and labelled. So I'm I'm fighting my old sort of ways and getting these new ordered sort of ways, and it's a bit of a battle at the moment. But the ordered ways are going to win, I think. Good stuff. Are you back with us? Are you, did you have tech issues then? Um, I, no, not really. It's just an earbud adjustment. Um, <laughs> it just felt really uncomfortable in my ear, and I realised that it didn't have like a bit of um, you know one of those little bits that goes at the end of an earbud. All right. So, mm -hmm. really yeah. um, we've actually got um, a nice question here from Lainey Ray. Where do you see yourself in five years? I'm just moving my table. Okay. It's an open-ended question, but it's quite an. In I always find those interesting. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, can I say this? Balls deep in more tat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say that, definitely. Um, so you, you think you're just going to... You you foresee yourself just continuing to get deeper and deeper into um, eBay and tat in general? Yeah, yeah I, I think... I To be honest, at my age, I, you know, I'm never going to be employed again. And I, and I just... I really love this this lifestyle and way to earn money and it's what I like is that it's in your hands you know you're not you're not having to clock in somewhere and it's you know if you if you if your sales are poor there is that obviously like this week's been a bit slower for everyone I think but but generally if you're listing stuff you're going to be selling it aren't you so it's in your hands to, as, as much as it can be interesting you should say that I almost ended up getting myself a job at a local supermarket um, and then I chickened out of it at the last moment because, like you, I think I'm now unemployable. So, God, things annoying me now. But yeah, now I, I like I almost I was almost there. I think I'd done like the online interview. You know, they get you to answer these silly questions. Yeah. And as I was answering the silly questions, I was thinking, wow, all these hoops just to yeah. work at a supermarket. And then you know, then the, the, I got like a. Um, uh, wow, you 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 you've been selected as if I should be so grateful for you know, <laughs> and then I just realised I thought to myself, what am I thinking? You know, I thought it would be the right thing to do just to help the transition, etc. But we're managing fine, and you know, when I think about it, I think I am now definitely unemployable. <laughs> I was like, that, that is me. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as for the uh, the original question, where where will we be in in five years? I honestly don't know, and our life has been like that since uh, about two thousand when we went full time, self employed. We've kind of reinvented our what we do every few years anyway, and that's what's kept it enjoyable, I think. So I honestly don't know, and that's how I like it. Would be my answer. That's kind of scary, but in a way, to a lot of people, saying that you wouldn't know, but you like it, that's the part that would confuse a lot of people. Um, I mean, I get what you're saying completely, but to a lot of people, if you say, I don't know where I'm going to be, or or even something as simple as, you know, when when's your next income, you don't fully know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, can, you have an idea of what you expect, um, but that's alien to a lot of people, I think. Um, and once you can get your head around yeah. that, 
it is something you get used to for sure but it's not that we don't plan obviously we we planned the shop and we we had a, a plan for that it wasn't going as as we wanted so we we've come back out but i don't know it just it, it just evolves i think that's the word that has been used a lot and and that that describes what myself and andrew do we just evolve, evolve and we go with it and we change it and it's it's not always easy but it's makes life interesting yeah where where do your viewers see themselves in five years time where, where does laney see herself oh, yeah. that's a good question maybe laney can tell us in the chat where where she sees herself i mean i think everyone wants to progress in the end don't they just or like be better at what they're currently doing um, or maybe you know just get they have a goal or a dream that they're working towards and this could be like a stepping stone um, just like any job is yeah I think life kind of leads you on a path anyway and if you're happy to kind of follow and and just follow what works and change it and it's like um, I always think of the whole YouTube thing I, I would never have imagined this going back two years and that's just worked I've met people I've made friends and just kept pushing it and I, I couldn't have imagined being here two years ago you know what I mean but it's been it and the journey's been interesting and fun and unpredictable and that's kind of how I live my life <laughs> keeps things interesting um so um, but you know, Bernard Armstrong kind of asks a question, or like for you there, Nick. He says, "Do you think plans are good for this kind of job?" And you know, what what would you say to that? I mean, do you think plans are, are a good thing in if you're a self-employed, you know, peddler of tat? Yeah, I, I think you have to have goals, and you have to be have an idea of where you're going but also be flexible to know that things might change things might not work out and just be able to roll with it and and evolve as it goes you know what you have planned likely isn't going to happen but you may go off on some other path i'm sure you guys have, have have found this as well you may have an idea of where you're going but you end up somewhere else and that's absolutely fine in my world yeah, yeah and do you agree you wanna, with that yeah, I mean, if you want to simplify that to even like a basic level that even applies to what you sell. Um, you know, just because something is selling well for you now um, is no guarantee that it'll sell for you in the coming months or years. Um, and just because something's not popular and you can't give it away now doesn't mean that in a couple of years it doesn't become ridiculously popular. I mean, it, it really is. It is really that predict um, unpredictable. I mean, you know, who, who'd have known that? That that you know, all these different niches get resurgences, don't they? Like, um, I mean, who'd have ever thought that the um, was it is it those X Factor buzzers or Britain's Got Talent buzzers? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, who, who, who would have thought when they were probably knocking that game out at a discount of a fiver because no one wanted it at the supermarket? Who would have ever thought that? You know, it would become like so. I mean, I don't even know why. I didn't. And I've never looked into it, but. All I know is that it's expensive for what it is, right? Yeah, well, I, I shared those going back a couple of years, early on when I was doing videos, I think. They are really quite cheap, tacky things. Yeah. They're just a buzzer, and it, and it goes, and, and it lights up. And I think I thought I did really well selling them for 15 quid each back then. I think I paid a pound for the three. But recently, people have been getting silly, yeah. silly money. 70, 80 quid almost? I don't know. Yeah, I think that was for a set though, the three. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. Still, that's crazy, isn't it? But it yeah. just shows that the, the you know the general public will pay what it needs to pay, as in the um, two backer masks, you know. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't get what you were getting in, at the height of that craze now, could you? I mean, now they're back to whatever twenty quid, whatever they're worth. Yeah. Um, but for the, for that week, that lady was laughing. Um. Yeah. You know, people people added value to that yeah. mask. Yeah, it was that demand, wasn't it? And, yeah. and, that, and that comes in that flexibility is, you know, we can all have our goals or, you know, if we've got items we're collecting for quarter four or items we're collecting for certain night, suddenly it can just flip on its head. It can be on a TV show or, or, or you yeah, know, the, the public's, general public's uh, attention is drawn to it and bang. 
you, you've you've got to be that make that instant judgment to get it listed, haven't you? Yeah, I loved that whole thing when that video kicked off. My first thought, funnily enough, was, can I get hold of those masks? And I, I looked at it on Amazon, and when when it took off, Amazon still had stock, but I could see that the rank had gone from about seven or eight thousand in toys to like, and. You, it doesn't take a genius to work out Amazon were going to sell out quick. So I just, I quickly told a few friends and uh, we all reserved stock here, there and everywhere. And then I spent the next two or three days just chasing around Argos, <laughs> buying them all up. I love that though. I love the opportunist idea of that, that, you know, the money is there if you're quick enough and able to do it. Yeah. And conversely, so it can work the opposite way as well. I mean, if you came in at the, I mean, it it, it it sounds a bit like that kind of sounds a bit like stocks and shares in a way where, you know, if, if some good news comes in and, you know, the stock goes up and, you know, or if some bad news comes in, the stock goes down, you've got to be at the right point to, to profit. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to lose massively. So it's, yeah. you know, it's, it, is, it is pretty much playing the stock market. But the, the beauty of RA, as in retail arbitrage, is you've got that window of let's say 30 days to take it back yeah you know what i mean so it, you can't really lose yeah it's like the nintendo things that i've bought a load of if i can't make profit on them they're going back and yeah no, it, it's it's good and I, from what i've seen of oh, yeah, i haven't done really much of it to be fair but you've either got to be first there haven't you or the last man standing and and being the last man standing might be 12 months or two years but then you may then still end up making greater profits it, it all depends on what it is you're selling doesn't it but but you've got to be able to either have that investment tied up or or not so it, you have a, a few decisions to make so you know to, to, to go on it but it was interesting last um last year with the uh mog the cats out of sainsbury's wasn't it yeah that, you know i didn't be waiting on those yeah, I, I sold them, I picked them up, I think it was, the video was out, the advert was out on the Thursday, and we'd gone to Sainsbury's on the Friday. I hadn't even seen the advert, and we saw them in the, in the front front and centre of the shop, and I thought, well, oh, these have got to be got to be worth something. And then we saw the advert and thought, yeah, they're going to go crazy. So we, we bought some, and it did go crazy, but then we bought some more, and it the, the it sort of died a bit towards December, so I, I ended up, I think I ended up with three left and I thought, oh, crap, and they're not going to sell next year. And then I think it was about March time, I was just looking on, on eBay and they was, they'd started to go for 30 or 40 pounds again. So I ended up selling the last three for more than I'd sold the original three for. So that's yeah. something else to bear in mind if there's a, a hot item from a department store at Christmas time, you know, you haven't necessarily lost the money. The value may still be there after Christmas yeah a lot of people ask me questions about RA and and when to sell and how to do it and all of this and I say that it's not easy and I get it wrong you know and we all get it wrong it's, it's so hard to predict where prices are going to go and that was a perfect example because like you said if you were in early people were asking crazy money the first people to get on on the ball with it yeah I got in and cleared mine middle of December and got out when prices were okay but yeah as as you proved, you could have waited an extra three or four months and yeah. done even better. But I, I imagine that the, the, the market would just end after Christmas. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it is weird. And there is no sort of formula, an, an exact formula on it, is it? And, and that's that's kind of a good thing and a, and a bad thing. If you're, you know, if, if you're not somebody who's going to roll the dice on it, then perhaps don't get involved in it. It's proper Wild West kind of high risk stuff, really. <laughs> It's as, it's as much as is well i don't know it's as much risk as you want to put in it because you do have that window where you can return the stuff if you've got the balls to rock up with bags full of the same item which i have done before i've gone back to argos with tons of the same thing and they have to give you your money back you know what i mean it's but it's yeah. you have to have pretty thick skin to answer those questions when they come at you <laughs> um laney has actually um answered the question about the, where in five years and she just wants to be happy buying tat full time but she's added an extension to her question um is there anything in specific in particular like maybe a special holiday a vintage car 
or a bigger home that you want to reach in five years? Like a, a, anything special like that? Um, for me, it's pro probably just have a, a really nice family holiday somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd love to get onto the housing ladder at some point. So I suppose if I set myself a five-year goal for that and achieve that, that would be something I'd be extremely proud of. So that's something that I I always have like an eye on. That's for me. Yeah, for me, it's just being comfortable. Um, that's all I I I aspire to really now. We're we're yeah, just being comfortable. And because we we spent the last year and a half really throwing all of our money at the shop we we sacrificed holidays so next year going on a, a lavish holiday would be <laughs> rather nice so that's my one year objective how's that one <laughs> pretty good sounds good <laughs> um andrew wilkinson asks um that he wants to start going to auctions but is but finding it difficult to find all purpose ones when i google auctions in my area i can't seem to find any that don't just deal in antiques um, I, it's that's not necessary. I mean, you might find them that they sell antiques and they will sell general. I mean, you just have to type in general slash household goods. Um, look in your local paper if you've got lo local paper. They often advertise there, and sometimes the best ones are there because you might find a local one that isn't online that doesn't advertise there's still a few of those out there not many but um, you might be lucky enough to live near one of those so it, it, I think you just need to research a bit more and also um, if by saying that you want to start going to auctions obviously you haven't been don't look at it like an Aladdin's cave um, auctions are exactly like boot fairs and charity shops in the way and what I mean by that is you can go one week and they will have all the items you like no one will bid on them and you'll get them at great prices then the next five weeks you go to the same auction they're gonna have nothing but hat um, and what they do have is gonna get bid up to beyond eBay prices and you're gonna be sat there thinking what am I doing here um, auctions are not great every week again like just like boot fairs just like charity shops it's a case of persistence um, checking them regularly every week um, until you find something you want. And also with auctions, even within one auction, you may be there for the first couple of hours and you think these prices are sky high. You may have seen this here, but if you stick around till two hours later, everybody's buggered off. They're either spent out or they've oh, just they got yeah. gone home. Yeah. Old man and his dog and and some smelly woman left and you just you just get whatever you want so yeah. if you can stick around till the end of an auction sometimes the whole dynamic changes and you get a load of bids for the first bid sorry for the first bid i mean i'm talking in my experience is going back four or five years i've not done auctions for years but yeah i do enjoy those yeah um yep yeah. yeah, karen Sorry, I was going to say, it's, it's interesting about um, the question that you couldn't find anything locally. I'm, I'm kind of having that same sort of issue locally in Kent, but actually what I've realised I've got to do is go really old school and pick up the phone and phone and phone some of these auction places up because they don't, It's some of it's a bit stepping back in time, isn't it, the way they're run. So it's they are around, it's just you're not necessarily going to pinpoint them down using Google, which is... Which is interesting. So you've got to go go old school, pick up the phone, and and have a look on Yale.com or if you still get Yellow Pages to find them, find those auctions through that through that means. Yeah, definitely. And 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 sometimes you get those random ones that pop up. You know that they'll they'll have them every now and then for a clearance or whatever. So you know, local papers are always good to you know good to know what's going on in your in your community. Yeah. Um, Laura Chester asks, when did you know or bracket or feel comfortable um, doing this full time? I work part time and do eBay, so I don't have to do overtime, but it's going okay. And hopefully next year you can go, uh, I can go full time next year. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose it's that's just a question of when you feel comfortable, really. Um, it, you know, some people are going to be mad risk takers and and stop. And, and go full time probably before they're ready. 
looking at myself there. <laughs> just, some people would just say, you know what, screw it, I'm going to just do it and make it work and somehow you manage to scrape through and you're still alive and you still have a roof over your head. Um, but then some people will want to make sure that there's zero risk and 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 you know a way to do that obviously is to just get some money squirreled away so when you do go full time you can kind of um, ride out any quiet moments for the first few months. I mean, yeah. What would you guys say? I mean, and, I mean, when Sean, I mean, when did you decide to just be a cat peddler, or have you always done it from day I've, one? I've, I think when I was combining the two, my frustration, I said in the in the SMSSM show. Shameless plug. Um, I wish I'd done this years ago because I've I've always I've always sort of dabbled over the years and it goes right back to 2002 when I sort of first discovered eBay and even at that point I, I just never saw it as a as a viable way of of doing a living and and it wasn't really until I first started seeing Nick's videos and I'm not sucking up that's that's just a fact I I never really saw that even then until then that you could actually do this. Full time, so the penny never never dropped with me at any point in in my life previous to then. But I did just sort of go for it because uh, I'm just unemployable. And previous, when I was a when I was a young man, I was very sort of, you know, I was one of the workers. I would have a little bitch and a moan about my boss, but I'd carry on doing it anyway. Whereas a bit later in my working career, I wouldn't shut my mouth up and and I would say what I had to say whether I was wrong or right or whatever, but I would say it, I'd voice an opinion and obviously that doesn't go down too well, particularly in retail. And um, so I, I, I've never been sacked, but I, I've always left on my own terms, which is, has been good. So I've never been sacked from a job, but I just know I, I can't go back to a, a being employed because it's, it wouldn't work. So, so, it, so in, in the, the answer to that is my, the decision's been made for me really, by, by myself. By your personality, I've got to chime in with you there, Sean. I'm I, really similar that for some reason all the pieces were there, but the penny didn't drop until Nick decided to to say yes, you can do this here. Um, yeah. I, I I was even at a point where I knew people were doing it, but I thought, oh, only in America, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That, and and when I think about it, it makes me feel really silly because I'd like to think that I can you know use a bit of initiative, but it was thanks to Nick's videos, really, that I kind of yeah. thought. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it, it's just a, a click in the mind, really, isn't yeah. it? It's a belief thing. Yeah. And and sometimes you do need to just see someone going, hey, I do this and it works for you to go. Yeah, sod it. I'll have a go at that. I've just realized that the sun's setting and I'm descending <laughs> into blackness. <laughs> You'll probably have to wrap up soon. Yeah. But going back to the original question, my, our experience was that we... I was in the police force, Andrea was working for Amazon, but we were doing eBay part time for quite some length of time. And we built it up to a point where it was still a big, big leap of faith quitting our fairly good jobs to do this full time. But we had built it up. And I think people just need to, if you're considering going full time, just be totally honest with yourself. Look at the numbers because the numbers don't lie and work out how much you need to make and are you capable of doing it? But there will always become a there will always come a point where these guys have been so here definitely where you have to take the jump, don't you? And you have to go, I've thought about it, I've thought about it, and then you take the leap of faith. And it's never easy, but but yeah, just build it up part time and be honest with yourself about the numbers. That's all I'd say. Yeah. Well, it is actually seven twenty two. I've just looked at the time. So we've gone well over that means we're going to owe Sean extra <laughs> appearance <laughs> money. Yeah, appearance money for overrun. Um, well, let's wrap it up there then. I just want to say again, thanks so much, Sean, for the Lego. I appreciate that. That's fantastic. I will return the favour at some point. And thanks for being our guest. Yes, that's, that's fine. You're welcome. I've enjoyed it. It's been great fun. I haven't actually chatted to you guys for quite a while online, have yeah. we? Yeah. Definitely, it's been fun chewing the fat about reselling. Yeah, it's been quite a while since we last chatted. And thanks to everyone that's that's come in watching. There's still 51 people watching now, so fantastic. Yep. Cheers, guys. Thanks as ever to hear. Yep. <laughs> I'm really disappearing now. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back.
we'll be back next week. Um, probably just the two of us, and maybe we'll have a topic. How how organised would that be? Let's do that. <laughs> Let's put it out there. We'll have a topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your questions. If you post your questions, and thanks to Sean who's here. I'll see you guys soon. Right. Bye.